keys that you have in your manual are really good ones. They're the ones that Karch is teaching the USA women. They're the ones that Sean and I are teaching our players here at BYU. They're the ones that, uh, you know, lots and lots of good high school teams have come up with these keys. I can tell you that Marv at Pepperdine, his keys are a little bit different. But uh, like you say, like I say, have good reasons for what you're doing. But uh, these are great keys. And we, if you don't want to make up your own, which, you know, you don't have to reinvent that wheel, uh, we'd encourage you to keep using these. And so one of the things we looked at in the motor learning presentation was this teaching method. And I think we kind of jumped over it. Uh, here's his teaching method, okay, next slide kind of thing. But uh, the teaching method was basically this. I want a demonstration. We said those were good. And then I want an assessment. So if I'm just teaching a new group, I'm pretending you guys never played volleyball, I'm just learning, you know, we're just going to go kind of figure some things out. We'll probably have a demo of what it looks like. And then we'll have an assessment. And then we'll come back and I'll say, all right, feels like we need to work on this, this, and this. Seems like these keys are in place, these keys aren't. All right, here's where I want to start. And then from there, I'm going to just go and I'm going to have a demonstration with a single key. And I'm going to teach about that key. I'm going to have the players focus on that key while I'm doing the demonstration. And then when they go practice, I'm going to give feedback about that key. And that's going to be my focus as a coach. Watch and give feedback about that key. And I don't care if they're screwing up everything else, so long as they're doing that key right. And uh, so I keep going, a key and feedback, a key and feedback, a key and feedback. And uh, each demonstration I give has that key. So here's first key. We're going to do, you know, forearm passing. I'm going to do the entire skill because we said that whole was better than part. So I'm going to do the entire skill, but I'm going to focus on a single key. So demonstration with an assessment and the demonstration with a key. Feedback about that key. When I'm comfortable with where we're at, demonstration again with a different key. Feedback about that key. And we feel like it's okay to backtrack. You know, hey, if uh, we're on key three and key one isn't quite what we want, I'm okay to give feedback about that, but uh, we said that uh, you know, learners have a limited ability to process information. And so if we jump forward, giving them the whole thing at once, all the keys, boy, that really creates this information overload and now I'm not very good at learning. And so uh, we want to be one key at a time as far as these things go. Relative to feedback, I don't know that this is in your manual, this is just my, I like these kinds of ideas about feedback. I think they're probably five kinds of feedback. One is uh, corrective feedback. Amber, you just bent your elbows when you passed. So I'm letting her know. Here's what I'm seeing as a coach. So there's some kind of corrective feedback with the implication that I'd like you to stop bending your elbows when you pass. Hey, you just bent your elbows when you passed. Don't bend your elbows, you know, kind of thing. And so that's some kind of corrective feedback. There's some kind of interrogative feedback where I'm going to ask Amber, what'd you just do right now when you pass that ball? Bend my elbows. You did, all right. Don't bend your elbows anymore. And so I want to get in and I want her to be conscious about what her body's doing. And a good way of doing that is asking her, what'd your elbows just do? And sometimes they'll say, hey, I thought I got it right. I thought they were pretty good. And yeah, you did, nice job. And so we want, them to, we want to catch them doing it right a lot. And uh, certainly we want to kind of ask them when they didn't quite do it right. And then sometimes what do they tell you? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just out here playing. And uh, so that's an opportunity to kind of have some discussion about that as well. You have to know what your body's doing in order for you to get better. And I can't be here all the time to talk to you. And so part of becoming a good volleyball player is this self-awareness of I can give myself feedback because I know what changes I'm trying to make without the coach being present. So there's that kind of feedback. A uh, third kind of feedback is one I've heard called feed forward. And so before the ball gets passed, I'm going to say, Amber, you've been great right now, but just remember, hey, you're going to keep your elbows straight this time, straight and simple move when you're going to pass this ball. Here it comes. Serve's coming at you. Keep your elbows straight. So I'm planting this seed in her mind of what she's going to do, you know, just, I'm going to be good at this 
before it even happens, I'm going to make her think about whatever it is I'm trying to make her think about. So some feed forward kind of thing. Then there's this uh, video feedback. And maybe we'll drag out the TiVo box, although I think the swim team borrowed our TiVo box. Uh, we've got a cart that we wheel around that the carpentry shop built for us that has a big TV in it. And then we have an old beater TiVo box that sits inside with an old beater video camera that sits up here. And the camera feed just feeds into the TiVo box, which then feeds into the television set. And uh, we can kind of position it wherever we want and uh, use that to pause. And Amber says, you know, what did you do with your elbows just then? Oh, I don't know. Well, let's come over and watch. And having this kind of third party view of what they're doing is actually very, very helpful. Because lots of players will just say, you know, I just don't feel that happening. OK, that's a problem, but let's go watch it. So you can see yourself, oh, yeah, there I go. And uh, so having some video feedback is this nice thing. And then the last thing, what's uh, everybody's favorite kind of feedback? positive feedback. And so that's the kind of my fifth kind of feedback if I'm going to give feedback. And so I'm going to come and I'm going to tell Amber, Amber, a girl, that was the best I've seen. You were really good that time. Your elbows were straight. That was wonderful. Nice job. And, uh, and that's going to just, those neural pathways are going to go nuts. Her motor program is going to get locked in. Look at her. She's feeling good. She didn't even do anything. And uh, <laughs> She's feeling, yeah, I'm all right here, you know? And so positive feedback is very, very powerful. And like I said, it's nice to catch your players doing it right a lot and uh, give them a ton of praise when they do something the way you want them to do it, especially if they've been making changes and they're working. And even if the ball goes off into a corner somewhere, you know, hey, doesn't matter. This was really good. Don't worry about that. The way the process was was great. We're not so worried about results right now, huh? Because we're making changes and some funny things are going to happen when we make changes. But boy, your process right now is great. And that really helps them think more about the changes as opposed to, how could that be a good move? I just shanked the ball over into the corner and the coach likes that. You know, I don't understand. Here's why. Because you're trying to change and that was a nice job that you're doing there. So all those things. So you're going to go off to your court and we're going to do forearm passing with quite a bit of this teaching method where we're going to learn a key, we're going to have a demonstration, then an assessment, then we're going to learn a key, have a demonstration with that key, and uh, then go play some volleyball, some really basic stuff. And it's going to be highly blocked right now. And we said, hey, we don't want to have blocked, we want to have random, except Kessel and Schmidt were having that discussion when I'm just figuring out how to learn this skill. I'm in this cognitive phase, and if you look a couple pages back, you don't have to look right now, but it talks about these phases of learning. So cognitive phase is, I don't know anything about the skill. I'm just trying to figure out what's required of me right now doing this skill, my, what my body's doing, what I need to do. I'm in this cognitive phase of learning. The associative phase of learning is kind of the next thing that comes next is now I know what I need to be doing and I'm associating my movements with the results. So I'm kind of, I've got it figured out more or less. I know what the skill is and now, oh, if I make this move, that happens. And if I make this move, that happens. So I'm kind of connecting my movements with results. And then the autonomous phase of learning is where I'm not very conscious about how my body is moving. I'm just executing. Here's that ball, I'm passing it. And I'm focused on just, I'm seeing this thing and trying to get that ball up there. And so I'm just focused on the result that I want as opposed to how I'm generating that result. And uh, so we go through those phases of learning. If we're in this cognitive phase where we're just figuring things out, having a little bit of blocked activity is probably a good thing. And so we're not terribly concerned about that. But as soon as you can just kind of do it, now we're going to get you into a little bit more random. So we're going to go do some little kind of easy stuff. Then we're going to play uh, just a little bit of butterfly where we're kind of stepping it up a little bit. And then we'll play a, a little bit of volleyball where we're actually having to pass, set, hit, focusing on some things in the context of an actual bit of volleyball going on.